Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new chapter of One Piece, which is on chapter 909. Now, this chapter right here was actually pretty cool. I'm really happy to see certain characters that I have not seen for a very long time. I wonder how long has it been, honestly. I mean, like, um, those of you guys who actually either read the chapter of One Piece or even watched the anime up to the present time of this point, you would know how long has it's how long has it has been to actually see these characters. Well, comparing to the anime, it's nothing different, but when it comes to reading to the manga, damn, dude. So, if anything else, let's just get this started. We have two at the Nekomamushi actually entered a village where it's actually behind a freaking location, or maybe it's just nearby right now. It, it's where, whatever it is. And right now, we get to know Marco the Phoenix right now, that he he is known to be the right hand man, you know. After the death of him, Marco challenged the enemy pirate Blackbeard and was defeated of him. But you know, the sad thing is as well is like do you know the the remaining crew is scattered and the whereabouts is really unknown. And and we have to it that Nekomamushi actually enter a place behind a waterfall where it is a very peaceful village. And we see Nekomamushi seeing Marco the Phoenix treating some treating an animal's wounds with his Phoenix fiery abilities, but also warns the little girl, telling him not to run around too much, otherwise he may have some major repercussions. And we have to it that Nekomamushi ends up healing some other villagers as well. And we see to it that um that Marco explains that Whitebeard or Pops actually created this place. And we get to know from Marco that Whitebeard himself was actually part of this village that could not really pay the heavenly tribute and unable to ally themselves with the world government. Not only that, um, we also got to know that Whitebeard became one of those people who is in this village right now that gets trafficked, trafficked by children, etc. And later on, Whitebeard will later on become a pirate and will continue to like um, care for this village by giving them by. By funneling money, dirty money, resources, in, and resources into this village, and we see to it why um, why Whitebeard will use all of his treasure for this village because this is his homeland. What Marco is playing to Nekomamushi, and we see to it that um, Nekomamushi explained like um, there is no clean money and dirty money in this tainted world. You know that. And we see to it that Marco explained that, like, you know, after the Summit War, we thought that the least we can do was protect what Pops treasure with our lives, you know? But then Blackbeard, but when Blackbeard started to invade, we started to go back for a payback war, but we lost. So, um, we had to it that Marco explained that Blackbeard took Pops' power from himself. Teach was more than just an enemy. He took everything from us. So, I just wanted to go have a go at that ungrateful guy, you know? And we have to it that Marco, of course, said that, of course, he lost, etc. So he also says, like, um, that, and we have to it that Nekumamushi, say, Nekumamushi, Nekumamushi talking to Marco says, So this village that Whitebeard poured his entire life into, giving it money, etc., it was the final keepsake, isn't it? And we even, and even Marco says, yeah, that's right. Even Red here even placed it, his grave nearby. Of course, he even tells Nekomamushi how Whitebeard was, and he says that Pops was a stingy guy after all. He was all, he always won all the booze, and he never treated us to meals. He used he used all of his share of the treasure we found to support this place. We all knew knew about it though. <laughs> and we see to it that like um. He decides to talk about someone called Weevil, that freaking new guy, that freaking guy who calls himself. Whitebeard son whatsoever. We have to it that Marco explained that Warlord Weevil, he has proclaimed himself to be the true son of the Pops. He's been attacking anybody that had re any relation to Pops. And Nekomamushi says like, so if it's true, what happens then? And we have to it that Marco says, I wouldn't know anything about an affair like that, but he look he looks just like Pops. He looks just like, he looks like. It looks like he's after Pop's inheritance, etc., as Marco explained. After he feeds um, Nekomamushi some, some cheese, he even tells him, even if I were to tell him that there is no inheritance, he wouldn't believe me. Both myself and this place will probably be targeted sometime soon. And we had to, then Nekomamushi realizes that Marco won't be able to go join Luffy to fight um, Kaido, you know? Because that's what Nekomamushi's plan was, to recruit 
Marco to help out to fight Kaido. And we have to that Marco explained that Weevil's mother back in is, is a former pirate. She was active around 30 years. No, 40 years ago is more accurate. She used to be on the same ship as Pops, to my surprise and shock. Like, wow. And we have to it that, like, um, Nekomamashi goes like, so you have to stay here to protect this keepsake, right? And we have to it that Marco says, yeah, I didn't expect you to give up this easily. But we have to it that, um... Marco says, so, you're going to meet up with Luffy and the Straw Hats after this, right? Then I need you to pass on a message for me, Nekomamushi. And Nekomamushi says, sure, why not? And did you guys say you were heading to Wano? And Nekomamushi says, yeah, we are. And we had to it that after that conversation, it got cut off right now and gets straight right into Wano. And dang, that art right there of Wano country right now was so beautiful. That giant freaking... Whatever that thing is called. Oh man, I don't even remember. But we see to it that Frankie is actually working for someone right now. And he's called Fran Franosuke, a carpenter. Which I think the guy threw some insults at Frankie. He says, yeah, sure, thank you, you stupid... Or something. As for Usopp, he is known to be U Uso Hachi, apparently. He is pretty much doing something right now that I do not even know right now. Right now, he's doing 8 pieces, 16 pieces, 32 pieces, 64 pieces, Wano Kuruke, Twilight Snow, I don't know, and Boyment of the Falling Snow. And and we have to it that, like, um, even with the slash touch look, it cut me. And But stick around, folks. Even a smear, the tiniest bit of to toad oil on the cut. It looks like all the blood's gone. I brought the toad oil. I'll take some as well, you know. So it looks like to me, Usopp is actually selling something right now. Like, he cut himself on the arm, but he ends up using toad oil to get rid of the mark, apparently. So, I do not know how what the Straw Hats are doing, the remaining ones, such as, like, um, Frankie, Usopp, and the others. But let me continue. Robin herself, she seems like she's starting to go into this geisha looking kind of thing if you guys know what a geisha is i do not have to really explain much about that you know and we had to that robin is practicing some kind of dance right now and she looks like she's struggling a bit i'm thinking my mind this is so not like robin honestly <laughs> and we had to it that kinemon and the others did arrive at wano country but kinemon on the other hand tells everyone that we have a mission right now Wano Country, the Shogun's name, Kurozumi Orochi, he and all the government officials who serve under him have without doubt the backing of Kaido. And we have to it that um, Kinemon explained that the government officials of this country are very oppressive, but if you lay a single hand on them, Kaido will surely hear about it. And therefore, until we've rallied enough people to our cause and until our preparations for battle are complete, we cannot allow any identities to be exposed, as um, Kinemon explained. So pretty much... Kinemon says like we have to gather allies and have them work with us. Otherwise, if we even cause any problems right now, Kaido will literally come out and kill and possibly cause some major trouble right now. So let us complete this mission quietly. But we have to it that um that something bad happened to Zoro right now. It says like um, it seems that the magistrate has finally caught the street cut murderer, and it it just alone this month three people have been cut down the street at night. How to my husband was also cut. We get to see to it that the street murderer that's been causing trouble around disrupting the, disrupting the town's peace is the grave robber. And apparently that's Zoro Juro. Apparently they disappear in the midst of a pirate attack, the legendary showman, room and remains, etc. Apparently Zoro is known to be a person who commits some kind of crime, which I do not really believe. He might have cut down people, but there has to be a reason behind it. Even right now, he is the street murderer. The guy who is pretty much holding freaking Zoro's sword, which is Shusui. He ends up saying, oh wow, you know, did you take it from the original thief? This is really beautiful. It's in my hands. I'm thinking in my mind, I should kill you right now, dude. Because you don't go touching Zoro's swords. No, no, no. You're not even worthy of freaking, you're not worthy of being a swordsman to even touch that. You gotta be at least Mihawk's level or Zoro's level to even touch that sword. Aside from that, we have to it that Zoro is to be committing seppuku because of some kind of crimes he did, you know? Whether as a grave robber or maybe stealing the sword, I don't know what the hell it is. 
And we see to it that this guy was mocking Zoro by saying, Hey, don't cry out disgracefully, you know, this is the final act, the most important duty for a samurai. I'm thinking in my mind, I don't see Zoro as a samurai. I see him as a freaking pirate swordsman, nothing more. And he even says that there are witnesses and there's enough evidence. You will die a disgraceful, honorable death. Be happy that you can commit seppuku. I'm thinking in my mind, I think you guys are just trying to be total douches, okay? Like, I don't know what Zoro did, but like I said, I think he might have cut down some people, but I don't think, I think, whatever the case may be, I don't know what it is. Aside from that, Zoro is told to commit seppuku while this guy is staring at freaking Zoro's freaking like him shusui sword, which I go like, I should kill you. But that doesn't matter right now because when Zoro was about to commit it, he even says like, you smell like blood. You're the culprit, aren't you? He even freaking slashed the guy with just the seppuku knife alone and everyone's like, what the hell? He did that with the seppuku blade and he go and Zoro's like, sorry Kinemon, I can't seem to calm down after this. So, the plan failed in other cases. Alright, an overall simple summary without a lot of detail, which I'm pretty sure you guys would rather want right now, is that Zoro himself, is that Marco and Nekomamashi has a little small talk about Whitebeard, and he's been actually using a lot of money to take care of a certain village that was considered his homeland, you know? That homeland was part of the world government, but they end up quitting after that because they can't pay the heavenly tribute. Aside from that, uh, Marco the Phoenix and Nekomamashi realizes that Marco cannot abide to go with Luffy to fight Kaido, you know, which really sucks. But he has to protect Pops' one last final keepsake, you know, because that's what's left of him. And, of course, like, uh, Marco wants Nekomamashi to pass on the message. And, of course, we get to look at Wano Country while Frankie, Usopp, and Robin are trying to gather some allies because Kinemon says, like, this is a Wano country right now, and the Shogun's name is Kurozumi Orochi. I'm gonna tell you right now, the gov that if you even that all the governments in this country right now are back have the backing of Kaido. Like if the government, the government officials of this country are very oppressive, but if you even land a, a single finger on them or even cause any problems, you, Kaido will really sure hear about it and will come after us. Therefore, until we rally enough people to our cause, until our preparations for battle are complete, we cannot be allowed to expose identities. So try to, like, play along and try to keep keep things down in the shut-eye, you know? But Zoro, on the other hand, was 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 not buying it at all. Because he knew the person, he knew who was the culprit of who did the crimes here and there, etc. So this was just, like, framing him. It was, it was foolish, honestly, dude. But, yeah. Aside from that, Zoro cut the guy down with just a single knife, and I'm like, wow, dude, talk about everyone being in shock right now, saying he did that with a seppuku blade? You gotta be kidding me. I'm thinking in my mind, yo, too bad you guys don't know, but this guy has been trained by Mihawk himself. And we all know Mihawk, how deadly he is with the, with the freaking single knife when he fought Zoro, dude. That is what's... Freaking crazy. So it shouldn't be too much of a shockwave if Zoro Mash had cut the guy far away with just a single single aerial slash with the seppuku knife, man. Because Mihawk could actually do something the same, but possibly much, much better. Aside from that, like I said, Marco and Nekomamashi talking to each other about Whitebeard and his and his homeland. Allowing, along with Whitebeard's upbringing, and then like freaking the Wano country, and trying to gather as many allies, but Zoro on the other hand ends up attacking someone, and goes like, ah oh, man, I've really done it now, Sonic Kinemon. So yeah, anyways, glad to see Wano, very beautiful country, and very old school stylish, but I think it's only, is, is to be expected. And seeing, seeing the other Straw Hats, such as Frankie, Robin, Zoro, and Kinemon, and that ninja guy, and whatever that guy's name is, etc. It's good to see the other half of the Straw Hats. I just really hope they reunite soon, because it's so freaking long that I haven't seen them together. So until then, I will see you guys on my next video. So, I'm Alpha Zero, people. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye.